Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm really excited. Um, if you guys watched my couch hunting vlog video, you'll remember that I had bought an embroidery hoop and was talking about how I wanted to dye some fabric to make a wall hanging. And I'm gonna do that today and I thought it would be fun to just film it for you guys so you guys could, you know, get inspired at home and maybe try it out for yourselves or just maybe have it inspire you to create something else. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to show you guys how I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry I didn't really post it all last week. I was going through something really, really tough and I just didn't really have the energy or the time to be filming or editing anything. Um, but yeah, I thought I would make this video today for you guys and hopefully y'all enjoy it. Um, I got a new nasal piercing, you might notice. Um, I switched out my nose or my nostril hoop for a stud and then I got my septum pierced two days ago. So it's still very fresh. <laughs> but anyway, oh my gosh, this part of my bangs never wants, see look at this, I can just make it do whatever. Excuse my bangs if they're just like flying off to who knows where during the video, but anyway Let's get started Okay, so this is going to pretty much be the main things that you're going to need I have some writ dye that I brought you can choose any color I wanted to do kind of a really dark blue So I'm going to be using just the royal blue color you're going to be need um, some measuring cups because you're going to be needing to put a cup of salt in with your dye mixture um, I have to use salt for mine because I'm going to be using a cotton fabric to dye and on the bottle it'll say um, what you need to mix in with your dye depending on what kind of fabric you're using. But like I said, in my case I'm using cotton so I'm going to be needing some salt to put in my mixture. And then of course I have my embroidery hoop. So now what I've done is I've taken my embroidery hoop and I've kind of put... I've attached it I guess to the fabric or just tightened it around the fabric so that's kind of how it should look. I kind of put it off to the corner and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace around the area with a pencil and I'm going to leave a couple inches of space around the perimeter of the hoop and just give myself kind of a guideline to cut out that piece of fabric just because this piece of fabric is fairly large and I don't want to be dyeing the entire thing. I could save it to dye another thing if I wanted. So I'm just going to cut some off and then we can get started with the dyeing. Okie dokie. So welcome to my bathroom. Um, sorry that the lighting's really crazy. Don't have any windows in my bathroom so it's just this like one really crappy light. But I have a five gallon just like paint bucket here from Home Depot. Ooh, goodness. Um, you're supposed to fill it up with like three gallons of warm water for each pound of fabric. Um, this is, I'm just going to be using this one square of fabric, which isn't anywhere close to a pound, probably like a half pound, but um, I'm just going to use the same amount of water and then I'm just probably going to, yeah, I'm just going to use the same amount of water just because like, I don't want to be having my hands like super deep in the bucket the whole time, if that makes any sense. Um, you can't really see it, but I've laid down um, some plastic garbage bags and taped them to the floor just so if I spill any dye anywhere, it won't really matter because um, I rent, I do not own this apartment, so I can't just be staining everything with my blue dye. Um, that would be bad. Make sure that you have some paper towels on hand just in case things get crazy. I also have a little mixing spoon, so, oh my god, <laughs> I have a mixing spoon so I can mix my dye. So let's go ahead and do that. It says to use a half bottle for this um, dyeing method. There's different ways you can do it. I'm using the sink method. I'm just not doing it in my sink because my sink in my kitchen is really, really tiny. Um, so I'm just using a bucket, and I've done this before, and it's, it's worked totally fine. So first, I'm going to take my salt. Hopefully there's about a cup in there. I need to buy more. i just go ahead and do that. Oh man. Oh no. Oh no. Not quite a cup. That's fine. So then you take your dye solution. I use, I think I already told you I use the RIT dye. Um, this is great for craft projects. I've used this a ton of times. 
So then it says to pour in a half bottle. I'm gonna do that because I want my fabric to turn out pretty dark. Um, so yeah, just pour it right in there. I think that feels about like a half bottle. Sure. And then we take our little mixing spoon and we're just gonna mix that all together. Also, it's important that you use hot water. I forgot to tell you that. So I just use the hottest water that comes out of my faucet. I didn't boil it or anything like that. And again, I've done this before and it's worked just fine. So um, don't feel the need to be boiling three gallons of water. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, piece of fabric that I'm using. I cut out just like a pretty nice size square so I know that I have enough room and I can kind of shift it around in my embroidery hoop and get like the best framing kind of a thing going that I want but I what the look that I'm gonna try and go for is I'm gonna just try and dye like half of it but I'm going to try and do like an ombre effect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see what's the best way to do this okay I'm gonna fold it in half like this so it's like a little triangle and then I'm going to and this doesn't have to be perfect I mean you can make it perfect but I'm just not like that so and then I'm going to take like the top half of it and I'm just gonna kind of bunch that up and I'm going to take a hair tie and tie that just so then um, that stays away from the dye because I'm trying to leave that white and then what you do is you're gonna have to dye for about 30 minutes and you wanna constantly be keeping um, the fabric moving while you're dyeing it. So it's to constantly be keeping it stirring, but because I'm doing an ombre effect, or at least that's what I'm gonna try and do, um, I'm going to be dipping it up and down the whole time. So I'm going to take my phone, start my timer for 30 minutes. You can do it for up to an hour, but I'm just gonna start with 30 minutes because it's a long time and my arms are gonna get really tired, so. I should have gotten some water. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay, we have our water bottle. Make sure you get some water because you're gonna get kind of tired because again, you're doing this for like at least 30 minutes. So get your timer started. Get some music going if you want to really get into that, you know, dip dying mood. And then you're just gonna, just gonna start. And when you're doing, oh yes, I'm so excited. When you're doing an ombre effect, what you wanna do is kinda like, go in a little bit at first, and then a little farther, and just keep going in a little bit farther, so then it's gonna create that ombre effect that you're trying to go for. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this for 30 minutes. I tried doing this with my shower curtain. I was like trying to dye it this really cool rust color and I was trying to do the same thing like an ombre dip dye just at like the bottom. Complete failure, you guys. Complete failure. Well, it turned into like a period blood stain red color and then the rest of the white part, I made the mistake because you're supposed to wash it afterwards and so I threw it in the wash. Well, okay, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here. You're supposed to um, supposed to rinse it out with cold water until you can't see any more dye, and then you're supposed to put it in the wash. And I thought I rinsed it out thoroughly enough, but then when I put it in the wash and I took it out, it just had dyed all of the white this awful pink color. So I don't know how to fix that. I want to try and bleach it, but I feel like that's going to be an insane project in itself. So also, um, I want to do another Q and A. So um, leave me questions for another Q and A, and I will try and answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, so it's been a half an hour of doing lots and lots of this. Um, once you're done, you should have something that looks kind of like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the bathtub and we're going to rinse out the part that we've dyed um, with nice cold water. So now what we're going to do is you want to rinse out um, your fabric until the water runs clear. So it might take a few minutes, but You'll get there, just be patient. <laughs> I can't remember which makeup tutorial it was in, but um, a lot of you guys were asking why I had red hands in that video. It's 
from this when I was drying my shower curtain. <laughs> If you're doing this um, in a bathtub, I recommend that every once in a while you stop um, washing it and just let your tub drain out because um, the dye can stain fiberglass, which is what my tub is made out of. And um, when I did this last time, I just, yeah, would empty it out periodically and I didn't have any issue with staining it. Um, just make sure that if there's any marks that are left in the tub once you're done, just, just scrub them out really quick and they should be fine, so. Yeah, also, you should probably wear clothes that you don't care about, but I was feeling, feeling risky, feeling dangerous today, so I'm just wearing my regular clothes, but. So now what I've done is I've taken my fabric and I've put it on a hanger. I used some um, some paper clips to kind of clip the white parts of the fabric away from the dyed part just so it doesn't transfer at all. And then I made sure to put some um, I made sure to put some paper towels down just so it can drip. And I'm just gonna wait for this to dry. I'm gonna go run some errands and then I'll come back and hopefully it'll be dry and ready to go into the embroidery hoop. Hey guys, welcome back. I got done doing my errands and so my fabric is now all dry. Um, we've changed locations, we're now in my living room. I thought it would be easier to sit down and kind of show you how to do the rest of the project. Um, yes, I finally got a couch. I'm sitting on my Craigslist couch that I got for 50 bucks. Um, and also this tapestry is new, which I'm super stoked about. But anyway, so this is what my fabric looks like after drying. I'm super stoked on how the dye turned out. I think it looks really, really good. That's exactly what I was going for. So now what I'm going to do is just take off all of my paper clips. Do, do, do. Okie dokie. All right, take the hanger off. And now it looks like that. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to take um, the inner part of your embroidery hoop which should fit inside because you can loosen and tighten this outer edge one um, with a little screw so you want to loosen it up and then you want to take the inner frame part and you can kind of just kind of figure out how you want it to look so you can kind of shift it around until it looks how you want it to look it could look like that or I'm just gonna kind of shift it around till I like the result. So we have our finished product. I'm super stoked with how it turned out. All I did was I just positioned it so it, I liked how it looked, and then I pulled the fabric really tight and screwed in. Or I pulled the fabric super tight, and then I screwed it a little bit tighter. And then I pulled the fabric a little bit more and then I finished screwing it tight. And then I just went around the perimeter and just trimmed off the excess. It doesn't have to be super pretty or anything, but yeah, this is the uh, finished product. And again, I couldn't be more happy with it. I'm excited to put it up in my bathroom. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It was definitely something different. Um, I'm really big into crafting and doing, I don't know, all sorts of art projects and DIYs. So if you want me to do more like this, please let me know. Um, don't forget to ask me questions for my next Q&A. I'm super excited to do that and can't wait to hear back from you guys. Um, yeah, don't forget to follow me on Snapchat and on Instagram. I'll put the links in the description as well at the end. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye.